Hey everybody, welcome to a special spooky edition of the Square Circle Cafe. I am your hostess Gladys here and I have brought along a very special guest star tonight. I, he's come back for another edition. Welcome back the Vice President of the Juggalo Wrestling Order and New England legend Rob Roberts. What's up everybody? Whoop whoop. Whoop whoop. JWO in the house. Yep. So the show got a boost of popularity seeing you on. Thank and you. I try. I try. I really so do. Thank you for that. But I had to bring you on because um, apparently I was on Facebook today and I noticed that for some reason something popped up on my timeline. And, and what was that? An article that came out a few... A, Someone had posted an article with your name in it. Uh-huh. And oh yeah. Oh, I know okay. It's hard to believe, but and apparently rumor has it that this person has issues with me as well, which I don't get because I have no I've done nothing except um you know, just told my truth and especially with the statement that I made yesterday. So with that being said, um, I want to give you a chance to explain what is this post that this person put up and what's going on? Okay. Well, okay. I was part, everybody knows that post was a very long time ago. Maybe three to four years ago now, maybe. I was part of a company called XUC. Extreme Underground Club. Now, I was there. Versace was their first booker. He, they put the screws to him. Literally put the screws to him. Mm -hmm. So, he left. Whatever. I took over as the booker. Being, a, a, like you said, a local legend i really don't like hearing that from people because i don't consider myself one but that's okay people like oh yeah rob you are and i'm like eh, whatever um so i was their booker right for probably like one some of their shows they had at where they run out of uh, uh tim uh gillette's mma out in uh Tibet in rhode island and um, it was owned by uh, two people, Ronan, Ronan, and Tough Daddy, Jeremiah. I don't give a shit. I will say your real name, Jeremiah. Okay? And these two guys, you know, they had a show. Now, I was the booker. It was fine. I was working at the time with my mom as a personal care assistant, right? So. It came along saying, you know, now this former person that's in the picture with me, his name is Rob Cabral, a.k.a. Bob Wire. Okay. He was a former best friend. We traveled together, not on the indies, but we were friends. We went to school together. We hung out together before everything he was also trained underneath me before everything okay this kid bob wire aka rob cabral he is a registered sex offender what yeah a registered sex offender he is on the massachusetts registration as a i think it's a level two or three sex offender yeah. yeah, yeah, he's a he's a pedophile piece of shit. Now, this kid was a prior friend of mine. He's helped me out. His family's helped me out. I was living in Fall River at the time. We were still hanging out. We were talking before this all came out. Okay, now, mind you, we were friends, blah, 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 that whole shit. So... I left. I met my kid's mother. Mind you, kid's mother. Okay, I have two sets of children. 
I have older kids and I have younger kids. Now, I left and I decided, you know, to go my own way, whatever. I always do. When I, I was young, dumb, and stupid, you know, I wasn't the, in the greatest mindset in the world. Now, I left. I still had contact with this kid. I talked periodically. I was out of wrestling at the time. I took nine years off because my body was beat up. I was getting older. You know, my body was still going through shit. I went through my own personal crap, my own dark demons. Now, when I found out about this kid prior, maybe when we ran KPW and we, he wanted to get booked on the show, we had him part of the, the group. Our boy, Paulie. Right, he was part. He's part of this. He was part of the crew too. He um put up a um a picture, and said it, that he was a registered sex offender. Okay, so you know how you can manipulate anything on the web. Mm -hmm. You can put a picture on anything you want, or whatever. You can Snapchat or make it look like somebody. Now I thought this thing was not legit. Okay, so I let it pass. I was like, whatever, you know. Now, all this snowballed, right? I was like, fuck, you know. I, I looked it up on the internet, and sure as shit, there it was. was Robert J. Cabral. Blah, 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 wherever the fuck he lives, Far River, Massachusetts. Registered sex offender. I was like, motherfucker. Now, this was after I found out, uh, after the booking, mind you, after the booking. Now, he, he went to the show. He hit me up on Facebook when I was working. I was like, I'll see you at the show. I was like, all right, whatever. I said, like, okay. I thought he was going to be there as a fan. You know, he can, supposedly they can go wherever, as long as they tell people, whatever. But still, there was little kids there. There was people with families, you know. This is this was not on me. I was just a booker. I was not the owner. He showed up prior before I even showed up. I was working with my mom and my stepfather. I was being a PCA. I was on my way to Tiverton from from Webster Mass, mind you. My stepfather never seen me wrestle. My mom seen me wrestle prior. Before that, she, she swore to me, she said, I'll never effing see you. I'll never effing watch you at a wrestling event again because I bled in front of her. And she didn't, she got all freaked out. So she said, I'll never, I'll never fucking, I'm going to swear, never fucking going to see you ever wrestle again. Now, this is like four years ago. This is the first time my mother ever came to a wrestling event prior. This was which to her last event was 98. This was back in 2000. Uh, what was it? 2020. Probably a couple of, uh, I forget, whatever. But now this, this all came out. Now the owners of XUC, Ronan and Jeremiah, AKA fuck face, tough daddy. Now they, pinned it all on me. They literally threw me underneath the fucking bus. They pinned everything on me, saying I told him when the show was. I told him where to be at. I I brought that he, he they said that I brought him to the show, which is fucking bullshit because everybody knows out there I would never affiliate myself with a fucking sex offender not ever now this was whatever this whole thing died down for years okay now this kid and I will say his name Miss uh, Mr. Vic Mostat, or oh, whatever the fuck your name is, that owns 
that little company, um, Moss, um, whatever it's called, he does uh, shooting, uh, shooting the shit. Oh, and, um, speaking of which, Versace's coming on. Okay. I'll Ladies wait. and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to the host of the Versace Stoner Wrestling Podcast, owner of the VSW on YouTube. I'd like to welcome to the Square Circle Cafe, the Versace Stoner, your boy. Hey, hey. Keep what's, what's up, Everybody, brother? Everybody, what is happening? What's going on? Just well, had I a was... very exciting, I just had a very exciting interview with longtime wrestler and, and promoter now, um, Adam Booker. Nice, bro. I was, I was long... letting, I was just letting... Rob Roberts finish his story about what's go been going on today on the special edition of the Square Circle Cafe because I the story needs to be told. So, well, I mean, and that's the thing. I mean, came in just at the right time. Yeah, well, you did. That's the thing. I mean, everybody has a right to tell their story, right? Yep. Yep. And we've gotten to the part where Vic's name has come up. And yeah, I'm not too happy with him. That's all right. Because you know I love you, brother, and you're my best friend. And uh, you I know... Mean, I mean, but I mean, not for nothing, Rob, we've had an interesting friendship. We've known that. We've yeah, had we our have. Downs. I mean, yeah. unfortunately, we, we, we started as good friends. Business got in the way of that. Yeah. And you all kind of... You 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 and you and TJ at the time would would have rather got booked, and you just kind of threw me aside and went with Top, and then you know you, you guys had then ran to Vic because he was your media outlet. He was the guy that was taking your interviews. He was the guy that was telling your story at the time. Yeah, and you invited him into the whole world, and he and you invited yeah, him I into did. the WO, and you did all yep. of that. And, and we invited of, him. Mind you, we didn't tell him he had anything. We just invited him. That's about it. But no, but at one point you guys ran to him. You, TJ, fed him yeah, some information. Yeah, unfortunately. Fed him some information. Yeah. And Tough Daddy finished it off with the rest. And, and you yeah. know, he put out an episode against him. Yeah, unfortunately. It was a sniper episode against me and my wife. Yeah. 90% of it was talking about the size of my dick, which I thought was kind of funny, considering he never saw it. And, and then really, it's, it's irrelevant in the whole situation. Uh, yeah, that, that's irrelevant. Yeah, I mean, how big my dick is really doesn't matter. Um, I really care about... Sure never mind, I won't say nothing. <laughs> I'm, no, I, what I'm saying is I was just kind of thrown off by the whole thing just because... Yeah, I know. I'm, you know, I'm sitting here at 40 years old, and I'm looking, and I'm like, this guy's really going to sit here and and talk about the size of my dick. And I'm just like, eh. okay, moving on now. Um, yeah. And, you know, some bullshit happened after that, and we know what happened at that show. That show was fucked up. Yeah, it was. Well, it we was were just talking about show. that whole... We it were was talking the about most that. cursed show in all of wrestling history. But yep. I'll be honest, none of you fucking idiots listened to me at the time. No, we did not, unfortunately. At the unfortunately. time, you were fucking idiots, yes. Yes, we were. Yes, if I you, admit, yes, I was a fucking idiot. If you and TJ had listened to me and Chad and stayed home that day, you would have never been put in that damn situation. Mm hmm This is true. But unfortunately, it did. And unfortunately, your past isn't squeaky clean. Not that you have done anything personally, but the people that you know. Yeah, but that's with anybody. How many of us know criminals? How many people know junkies? How many people know people that have done robberies, murderers? Yeah, no shit, you know, right? Everybody knows somebody that did something for the most part. Yep. Um, you know, Gladys put out a statement. She knew someone very close. And that's how Yes, I'm unfortunately. Been. And yeah, she's so, beating herself up for it, too, sometimes. The only way she could beat herself up for it is if she was helping him. That's it. Okay. Yeah, that's about it. And if you were helping him, then maybe you were rotten in hell, too. But if you don't know, you don't know. You can't know what you don't know. And, and, mm -hmm. and in a relationship, it's not your job to play detective and try to figure no, out. No, it's not. Them. You're supposed to just trust them. Yeah. When you marry somebody, you're in love with them, you think you know them, you trust them, that, that the marriage is based on trust. 
Yep. So, I mean, I don't see the issue there. I get it. It's embarrassing. I get it. it, it people are like, oh, my God. But at the same point, it's like, had you known sooner, maybe you could have done something sooner. But that's the only thing you could have done. It, it wasn't like you were sitting there watching them every night waiting to say, hey, maybe I should call the cops. Yeah, I know. Shit, that's like you were watching all the, the I would shows. Like uh... to, I would like to right now state exactly what Versace is talking about. Go ahead. I, six months ago, my now ex-husband was brought up on charges by the state police for having dark materials on his computers and on his phone. So much so that the federal government was red flagged and the Department of Homeland Security took him into custody. He is now facing federal charges and he is looking to 10 to 20 years in jail for it. No sooner was he arrested, I began divorce proceeding. Now I let me ask you something. There's a serious question here. In the how long have you been married to the guy? It would have been six years this October. In the six years that you were married to him, did he ever once take a trip to Epstein Island? <laughs> he couldn't even <laughs> afford. He couldn't even afford bus fare. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, but but that's understand like. He wasn't doing anything that was red flagging you. He wasn't bringing kids home again. This is these were dark material, which means yeah, it's very easily hidden on hard drives and other methods that are yep. out of your reach. Yeah, yep. I've read you the can hide files on a phone. You can hide photos. You can yeah. do all of that. If you're not one of those people that's up somebody's ass. Because there are wives up there that is up, you know, you got to have a joint account and you got every password and everything. You don't know what the other one is doing. Again, it goes back to the trust thing. Um, mm -hmm. I know you for the most part, Glass. I know I might not know you from long, but you've been in this wrestling community for quite some time. Yeah, a long time. Had, had been a different type of person, I could say, well, no, she would have probably, you know, whatever, but. Knowing the type of person you are, listening to the people that, that do know you, like I said, if you had had any wind of this earlier prior, you would have been the fuck out. Yeah. And he would have been already arrested at the point. It, 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 it's a shame because, you know, if you had found out earlier, maybe you could have stopped things earlier. But again, we're looking at dark materials. You, we don't know. I, I, I'm not going to speculate if he was involved with anything physically. Yeah, me neither. No, I can but tell what you he was doing. Tell you he was smart enough not to. He was just actively looking for this stuff online. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I mean, that it is a federal crime and it's against the law, but it wasn't like he was also bringing children into your house while you were at work or doing this and that. No. And, it, and you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, the, the accusations in, in people's minds are going to start flying and going wild, you know, what was really going on over in this house and how much did the wife know and this and that. It's like, these are pictures on the internet, pictures that are on, like I said, a hard drive that, that nobody might know about, you know? You might have you might have, have videos of your wrestling days working for Jerkface that nobody yeah. is sitting on a hard drive somewhere. That could be considered dark material now because of Jerkface. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. But what I did was, I, in a moment of trust in a chat room, I told my story to the Vic Moss podcast chat. And I wanted everyone to be, I wanted to be honest with everybody because I did not want to hide. Granted, well, that's I fair enough. I mean, online, if, if, but it was one of those. If I'm going to do business with you in any kind of a manner, I would like to know at least, hey, if this shit comes to light and all of a sudden three months down the line, I see a post, you know. You start writing da 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 has happened in your life, and I'm like, wait a minute, I've been working with this lady. Why didn't you mention anything about this? Yeah, so you did yeah. what, like I said, professionally, and again, you did nothing wrong because you're also, no. you know, you looked at that as a, also as part of another support, right? We're a family. Yeah, exactly. But tell unfortunately, you other people don't. Yeah, but one thing led to another, and unfortunately, there was a mix-up with the show that with the Magic in the Darkness podcast that I was supposed to host while you were on vacation. And um, one thing led to another, and I chose to leave the group. I didn't think it was a good fit for me. But the next thing I know, I'm seeing all these comments being shared 
by mutual friends of ours where I'm being told I'm unprofessional. And then he starts bringing up my past, talking about how I got, a, talking about my marriage to a quote pedo, which I didn't appreciate very much because I said that under confidence and trust and he's making it sound as though it was my fault. And I don't understand why he would pull that off. So that's why I had to make the statement because I knew that at some point this was going to come out and someone was going to try to use but, it. Uh, let me ask you, um, did friends and family, did, did your friends and family for the most part already know or was it like completely in No, this was way out of left field. Nobody. And there's one thing, I've read articles about this. People like this will do everything they can to cover it up. They will do whatever it takes to make it so no one finds out. Obviously, it didn't work for him. I didn't know. And I really and I really wish I had known because, yeah, I would have turned him into the feds myself. But when you found out and all this happened, you didn't tell a lot of people either. You didn't tell everybody. No, because that was embarrassing. It was humiliating. Because yeah, of course. Thinking, I'm saying, you know, like, of course. Yeah, I mean, my best friends, I introduced him to, you know, a lot of people I knew in the wrestling business, even though he claimed he knew a lot of people when really he didn't. And I, I, you know, I traveled with him. We did things together. And so, you know, but I still feel like I'm going to be apologizing for the rest of my life for introducing him to these people. Yeah, but you don't have to apologize for him. Well, no, you know what? No, because at least, you know, at the end of the day, you didn't introduce him to any children. Yeah, you know, I can see if you were bringing them around kids parties and shit, I'd say, yeah, okay, maybe you need to feel a little guilty. But there are other wrestlers. He probably wasn't interested in them anyways. It's just, it's just bringing a shitty person around. But, yeah. you know, the shitty nice person, you know, anyway. he got himself where he, he is where he deserves to be. He did federal yep. time. He's going to serve federal time. So then Unless, he started coming down with him, with stuff being said about Rob there. I and then my name keeps getting then my name keeps getting brought up. I was like, no, I'm not having this. That's why I wanted to have the episode tonight because but the thing is, is like, it out. and I mean, and this is how it went down when it happened. I mean, yep. in 2021, I ran KPW with uh, a tough daddy. Me and him, we ran it. We had a group. Rob brought in the, this Bob Wire dude. And, and all of a sudden, you know, he was okay. But then he started making stupid sexual jokes. Nothing, like, yeah. you know, too crazy. But just he was sharing, like, topless girls and shit. And I was just kind of annoyed with it. You know, I'm trying to run a biz. I'm trying to set up my first show. And um, a mutual friend, Paulie, comes in there. And he's all of a sudden, he's like, get this motherfucking ripper out of here. I'm going to fuck yep. him. I'm going to beat the piss out of him. And if you yep. don't get from now, I'm going to walk out of this promotion. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute, what's going on here? And then all of a sudden, you know, Paulie pulls up the fucking, you know, the registry, and there he's right there. Yep. You know? yep. And, okay, he was out of there. Never thought about this fucking guy again. And nope. And faithful, just, we... That faithful XUC show, you yep. know, again, I don't know what the fuck you were thinking, but I was sitting at home, and all of a sudden, I, I get a message from Chad, and he's like, you're never yep. going to believe who was at the show. And I'm like, thinking in my head, like, who, who the fuck would be there that would impress me? And he showed me the picture of you holding Bob Wire with some yeah. other and then That was his brother. That's his brother. Bob Wire. And yeah. then you're like, I know people don't like him, but he's helped my fam. Yeah, he and no, I he helped me personally. I guess he did some shit for you in the past. Yes, he did. Did it, it didn't involve children though, right? No, I was no, he helped I was homeless. I was living on the street. I just I I was I was going through my own personal shit. His family took me in. This was all before this all came out. Let me ask you something about Bob Why? Let me ask you something about your friendship with, with you know, him. Uh -huh. I don't even fucking remember his real name. But, and neither does it matter. Rob Cabral. I will say his name all day. Robert Cabral. Uh, okay, let me ask you about you and your friendship with Robert Cabral. It's a kind of similar situation with Gladys and her husband that you kind of didn't really have any clue what the fuck this dude was about. No, I had no fucking idea. We went to high school together. 
You know, I did. You know, he. Yes, he did train at top rope, but it wasn't that long. I brought him in as a trainee. I was helping him train. I helped him train. I was his trainee. You know, but I, there was no. There, you wasn't like you know into little kids while you were training. You know, dude, no, I had my own children at the time. But like you didn't know anything about his life. No, no, I had no idea that he was going uh, was doing this. I had no idea. No idea. Now, and, and, but for the record, though, it was just a, he just got caught once, right? With just one act, right? It wasn't like he was doing it for years with multiple. No, kids. no, just this one thing. Just this one thing. But you didn't know about it until no, you no, found no, out. No, no, no. I had no connection with him at all at that time. But, I was but, with my kid's mother at the time, I believe. No, I get that. But now let me ask you you obviously knew about it on that XUC show. Why, why how did you didn't take a picture with him? Why? I don't know, because it was just me being stupid. Yeah, I know sometimes you're not the smart. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes you do stupid shit, and that was probably yeah. one of the dumbest things. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I don't know if you thought of the ramifications, but you know how the wrestling world is. You're sitting there with yeah. a registered sex offender. And Unfortunately, you- I almost got blackballed. I had, I had, to, I had to clear my own name. I well, at the end of the day, ball. it wasn't just your promotion. It was a, it was, it, it, you weren't the it owner. It wasn't you, even my promotion. I didn't own it at all. And there was other people that, that knew about him being yes. a sex. Yes, it was. It was Tough Daddy, aka Jeremiah. I don't give a crap. I will drop his name. And Ronan, he was there prior before I even showed up. So that's what I'm, I'm saying. So they, like they I said, I'm working. You saw him, and they could have asked him to leave. Yeah, they could have asked him to leave. All I did was get one text from him and said, I'll see you at the show. I was like, whatever, okay. Uh, now, let me ask just... you this, because I know there was people there. Was there anybody, and I don't need names or anything, but was there any of fans in there from Fall River? Yeah, yeah. There was boy, okay. the bo- no, some no, of the no, boys me, were there, too. So no, some, no, no, let yeah. me ask you this. Because he's a registered sex offender and he's known in Fall River, don't you think other fans would have... Could have also told this guy, get the yeah, fuck out. Yeah, they should have. They should have said, "Hey, dude, you don't belong here. You're you do not belong here." He, like I said, he showed up before. They could have said, "Listen, you could you could leave." Why right didn't now. nobody tell Tim? Tim would have fucking escorted him out. Tim, I don't think Tim was there at the time. Timmy wasn't so I, there at the time. So with 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 with, with you, basically, you know, you hadn't had contact with this dude. Since no, no. Offended when he found out that the, the friendship was over, but granted, he had already helped you back in the day. You can't take that away. No, unfortunately, you can't take that away. But when you were living with him, he wasn't doing weird shit in front of you, right? No, no, because I brought my children around. Him. My daughter was little. My and daughter, your daughter was a never baby. Said, and let me ask them. No, your daughter, no, the no. Day, if he, he did, because uh, if he did, I would have fucking killed him. But they would tell you, right? Yeah, of course my daughter would. Because it happened to her. But this was somebody else. Somebody else, else. yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that's what I'm saying. So it was an isolated event that you couldn't foresee. That you didn't didn't know know. something. You weren't talking with him about He wasn't saying, hey, I'm going to fucking... No, no, hey, bro. He didn't like, hey, bro, guess what I did. (laughs) No, I had no contacts with the kids. Okay, so again, similar to what, what Gladys went through... You had no clue, and when you did, you didn't do it. The only bad judgment was when you saw the guy. You yeah, because we were short-staffed. We needed a referee. I, I but offered. Let me ask you, what's the difference between that now, what you did there, right? Uh huh. And that fucking Ring of Honor guy going around taking photos with all the other wrestlers when he was literally caught for trying to have sex with a minor online. He's doing the same thing. He's a registered sex offender. He's out there taking photos, and the wrestlers are taking you with them. No one's saying no, but no one's calling them pedophiles, but they're calling you one. Yeah, no, because I'm not. uh, That's what pisses me off. I saw those pictures. I didn't know this, the the, the whole WWE thing. I didn't hear all the stories. And uh, he was a, I saw that he was a registered sex offender hanging out with the boys. I was like, Oh God, this is gonna look so horrible for them. I was like, oh crap. And I was like, man, what the fuck? It was just weird. 
I just I just don't like it because I mean both of these have been kind of twisted with the light that's been shown. Because... Yeah, with me with him saying that I am one. No, you don't talk shit about me, dude. You don't talk shit about me. You know where I've been? You know who I fucking, what companies I've been in and I've, I've been part of? No, you don't talk shit about me. I am this group's vice president. I am the JWO. And I am very proud of myself, okay? I've been there and done that. Where have you been, dude? Doing your little podcasts. Who you know? Not a lot of people. Versace knows more people than anybody. Okay? So did I. Don't, don't fuck with me. Don't fuck with me. Okay? You, you have no idea what you've started. Okay? You don't know what you've started. You want a war, dude? I'll give you one. And I and I'll be honest, I don't think anybody is looking for a war because you know. Yeah, they, no, they, I'm not. Well, I don't. I'm no, not one of those guys. This is about. It's just the fact no. that but, you know, and even bringing up the past just to make them. But even on the other side, you know, he he's not looking for a full scale war. Yes, he has ammunition. Yes, he has shit ready to fire. Yes. Yeah, but it's, more, it's not. It's more stuff that can come flying through. But he's not looking to do that. Nobody wants to start false scale wars. Nobody wants to bring that drama because all it does is just make everybody look stupid with the fucking Yeah, it drama. does. It really does. Damn, it does. Drama it's looks very stupid. petty and it's very stupid. I yeah, mean, but you know what else? It, put the it, what it does is just I take the bullets out of the gun. No matter what mm -hmm. y'all are doing, it just makes it look backyard. I don't care if whatever promotion, whatever, because this is backyard fucking drama. This yeah, isn't professional it's, wrestling it's, drama. This isn't even professional drama. This is backyard drama. <laughs> Just kids, you know. But, yeah, I mean, sweet. again, I like to know who I'm working with. And, again, this is being brought up, you know, because I saw this two years ago. Rob's a fucking yeah, ripper. No Rob's shit. a fucking pedophile. Rob's fucking this and that. He's friends with the ripper. And, like, yeah, I asked you questions, but I didn't really ex cross-examine. I didn't ask enough. And, yeah. and, you know, there was some gaps in my head. Like, I did want to know, did you, you know, did you, did he tell you anything? Or, you know, how did that, you know, happen? Or what favor did he even do for you? Because I didn't know what, you know, all I saw is, you know, he did something for you back in the day. Uh, yeah. But, you know, you haven't had the most easiest life, Rob. You've been around, you've been homeless, you've been here and there. You've never been ashamed of that. You've never lied about that. No. Well, why would I lie about anything? Yes, you don't I, lie, you fucking, sometimes you can't even get to shows, but yeah, we all knew that. These weren't lies. No. You know, you never pretended to go around. You never said, hey, I got a fucking Ferrari. Watch me ride around. It's like, no, I'm Rob Roberts. I don't drive, whether it was in New Bedford or over here. Yeah. It, it didn't really matter. No. I mean, granted, I think you and TJ are a pain in the ass when I got to do shows because I got to drive the opposite ends to pick these yeah, up. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> my fault. <laughs> my fault. Well, at least you don't have to pick me up no more. <laughs> no. If we're going to Woonsocket, I don't. If we're going to another show, I do, though. I have to go fucking every which hey, way. In my defense, I don't drive either. I, ref I, ref I rely on either public transportation, my feet, or rides. So I, yeah, I used to have, see, there used to be another prospect. I used to have Mikey, and Mikey was yeah, the driver. I, used to, I yeah. could get him to pick these boys up and bring them anywhere. Anytime, all wanted, of a sudden, people, the president, anytime we wanted to hang out, he'd be like, hey, Mikey, go get Rob and TJ. And we used to and hang out. I don't out. know what happened. I think the president insulted him. So, uh, he insulted the president. And yeah, no something happened. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. Mikey back because he'll come and get Gladys because he'll bring his all out, out here. Well, give me the water, John. I think I could get there by commuter rail. So yeah. you could get here by commuter rail. I, think I so. actually wouldn't mind that riding the train, man. That was fun. Yeah, you but yeah, know. I just felt like it just needed to be said that you know it's unfair and petty that someone would try to bring up somebody's past just yeah. to try to drag him into the mud, and I didn't let me ask my dirty this. laundry being aired out like that, or being threatened to be aired out like that, because... Well, well, that's the thing. I mean, let me add something. How detrimental to your career and to anything was, it's just really, at this point, a bruise to the ego, because it wasn't a private chat. It wasn't like yeah. you posted it on your wall. Yeah. 
you know, granted it stung and granted it, it bruised, but it wasn't detrimental. It didn't ruin your podcast. It didn't ruin your name. No. But I no, I mean, I'm just coming back from a four year hiatus. So it's like, but yes, you don't need any bumps. And again, you, you, you kind of beat the punch up, but he did the same today too. He came out today and said that, you know, 11 years ago, he was in a dark place drinking in pills and he, he tried to hire a prostitute and he got arrested for it and da, 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 da. He did uh, the same yeah. today it's on his wall. Oh, at least he admitted, yeah, I don't have him on my Facebook. <laughs> no, but after yeah. you posted that, he, he did, he posted that. He came out and admitted it clean and again. Kind of like Gladys, she made a statement before people take shit and run with it because people will. Yeah, take yeah, shit. let's not run with this. No, let's just end it. You know, it's just, well, no, it, 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 the stories are all there. Everybody knows the stories, and there's no. There's yeah, everybody time. knows it's what happened. Crazy. You can yeah. ask Vic the story about the prostitute, and he'll tell you the same story he told me, which yeah. is a very truthful story. And you know, shit happens. People do do stupid things. You took a photo yeah. with a sex offender. He hired a prostitute. People do dumb shit. Yeah. We all do dumb shit. Sometimes we get fucking caught. Sometimes it passes by. Sometimes it's fucking... It, 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 it is what it is. But none of us need to be, you know, like crucifying each other over it. <laughs> uh, but I like perfect. a good crucifixion. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's perfect, man. Nobody's perfect, no. man. That's the thing, you know. I don't like it to see see things come like this. I don't like to see people fighting, you know. Um, it, it's not necessary. Not, a, not over nothing. Not over, you know, there's not even people making money on this. It's like, if there was millions of dollars to say, okay, fucking go to war, kill each other. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> it's not, no one's making a penny. It's like, fucking just shut up, everybody. <laughs> All right. Well, now that we finally got the air clear, so it's it's best that we just move on from this Let's just end it here on that note and yeah. continue on with our respective careers. So on behalf of Rob Roberts of the Versace Stoner, this has been Gladys of the Square Circle Cafe, the Square Circle Cafe for wrestling fans, by wrestling fans. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs>